Hey, um, is it uh, raining? And is it by chance below 65 degrees? Because if it is, it sounds like it's fall. Hello everyone, my name is Michael. Welcome to the Iron Snail. Hope you've been enjoying YouTube. Today we're looking at the Huckberry X Flint and Tender Flannel Line Wax Trucker Type 1 Jacket. Hello everyone, you're probably confused as to why I didn't do an Iron Snail clothing update considering that all of the jackets sold out within 20 minutes of them going live. Each ding is me getting an email that a jacket sold. Very surreal, but that's next video, which will be very, very soon. I'll be announcing giveaways. We're now gonna start doing like five different products at the same time. I'll tell you about those. We're trying to do a wool Mackinac jacket. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we're gonna try and make a clothing brand that takes over the world. Oh, wait, if you haven't picked up a pin yet and you want a pin, you can go to the ironsnail.us and you can buy a pin. Today, we're looking at the Huckberry X Flint and Tinner Flannel Line Wax Trucker Type 1 jacket. I have it in tan, the most popular color, and I also have it in black, so we'll be doing both. And we're, it may look like we are in like a nuclear wasteland where nobody has been for the past thousand years, but we're actually just in Queens. Okay, so real quick, obviously I'm decked out in Huckberry today. This is the Huckberry Flint and Tinder Flannel Line Wax Trucker Jacket. This is the Huckberry X Peak Designs waterproof backpack that I actually really like. I take it on set all the time. And I'm also wearing Huckberry's in-house brand all-weather boots, which are fully waterproof boots, unlike LL Bean boots, which are, unless you get the Gore-Tex version, only up to the rubber part. So these are fully waterproof. Figured I would test them out considering it's raining, but that's not important what is important is this jacket we will be going over the actual wax canvas because fascinatingly a lot of other brands with much more expensive jackets use either the same fabric or from the same mill we'll go over that how you should re-wax your jacket or at least the products that you should use then we'll look at fit we'll look at the lining because every review that you watch will say like oh well the lining's cool that it's lined but so we'll go over that and then that should really wrap us up I think this will be a short video so let's get started we have to go to that trail so there's only one way. Also, there's a rabies sign in there. That's actually my worst fear. So you may be thinking, well, I already have a Gore-Tex jacket. Why would I need a wax canvas jacket? That's a good question, especially one without a hood. You don't. Wax cotton or like just a wax jacket usually holds up a lot longer than Gore-Tex, which will eventually delaminate and will get you wet. And it's cool because it ages and looks more and more beautiful over time. So Huckberry obviously shows that off with this picture. People likey that. Mikey likey that. It is actually very, very water resistant. A lot of people will say if you're out in just an absolute downpour, it will soak through. But I've done plenty of shower tests and it's been good so far. It is very water resistant. And this fabric is both made and waxed in New Jersey. The actual wax fabric itself is a 7 ounce Martexan waxed sailcloth made with an Oxford weave. This is a two-step process, so the actual fabric is made unwaxed by Fairfield Textiles in New Jersey, which is very cool, and then Martexan is the company that actually does the waxing of the jacket. Scratch that, it's actually not made by Martexan, it's made by Martin Dying and Finishing Company, and their wax product is called Martexan. And what's very interesting is if you go on Fairfield Textiles, very updated for 2022 website, you can see the exact fabric that this jacket uses, the seven ounce wax sailcloth, but you can also see what other companies use when they're making their jacket. So they're two different companies, but they're in the same building, so they may be owned by the same person. I'm not entirely sure, and I don't want to lie to you, but it seems very logical, or they just had one heck of a coincidence. And if you don't know why you can't wash your jacket, we'll get into that later, but it has to do with that actual waxing process that you cannot replicate at home. So do not wash your jacket. So the interesting thing though, is that you may know the term Oxford weave from an Oxford shirt. That's exactly what this is. Oxford shirts are obviously not seven ounces. They're usually lighter than that, but it's the same weave. So picture an Oxford shirt, much beefier, with a bunch of wax inside of it. And that's what this feels like. Quick outfit change, now I'm wearing the black one. I feel like more dark and mysterious as I walk towards the light. Now we're gonna talk about the lining. The lining, depending on where you live and the climate that you're in, is either very good or very bad. But with double waxed cotton, which is waxed on both sides, it does feel a little bit gross if you don't have a lining. Huckberry does offer one without a lining and so does Rogue Territory. But they, it's like you just, you're covered in wax at the end of the day which is the last thing you want to be covered in. The reason why there's uh, quite a bit of hubbub about this lining and every reviewer will talk about it is because it's made out of 100% polyester and people in this genre of clothing or style and paying these prices usually like to go 
all natural fabrics or a wool rich blend which would be at least 50% wool. In this case I think they're using polyester because it's the closest synthetic equivalent to wool. That's why I think they're using it. Also it probably lowers the price which is why you can get a lined wax jacket for $265 as opposed to like 400 or more. But who really knows? I can't read Huckberry's mind especially because it's a company so it doesn't have a brain. And if it did, all it would say is, did we sell more things today? All in all, I think the best of both worlds would be if Huckberry just did a premium line and the lining was wool or cotton for different reasons. That could be pretty cool, but that's the lining. Okay, so the basic form factor of this jacket is based off of the Levi's Type 1, but really not much. I think everybody says that just because of the booby, the one booby pocket here and the none here, but it has hand pockets. It's a little longer, so it's just a, it's like a general jacket is what I would say it's based off of. And then this pocket is inspired by the Levi's booby movie. In terms of sizing, I am 5'9", 135 pounds, 140 pounds, I have no idea. And it fits me, but I wish it was a little bit shorter, but it fits me generally well. I would say go true to size and you'll be totally fine. It's also made so that way you can toss something under it and be fine. I wore this with a hoodie yesterday and let me tell you, the looks I got, amazing. People were rubbing my jacket and they're like, wow, that's, it's very stiff. I was like, I know it's because it's actually coated in, in wax but so yeah if it's me fine people like stridewise who are they look like popeye after he just had the spinach where they're like kind of like this it fits them a little bit better that was a compliment by the way stridewise i don't want to put my foot in my mouth because i haven't washed my feet in a while before we get into why you can't wash this jacket i just the value of this jacket obviously is the price especially with lining but it's also if it matters to you it matters to some people not to others Everything is made and sourced in the U.S., which is crazy for this price point. There's many, many ways Huckberry can do it, from how their company is structured to how many jackets they order. Who knows? It's probably a mix of both, but getting something made in the U.S. with all U.S. made materials for $265 and having it lined is wild. So that's the, the value prop is still very much there. It's not built like a $400, $500 jacket, but you're also basically paying for two jackets at that point, so you can get two different colors. And I don't think you'd ever have a problem with this. I think it would last you for a very, very, very long time. So all in all, good jacket. Great jacket. Great job, Huckberry. Look at this. People clearly had a party in the woods here and they littered. They had Arizona iced tea, Smirnoff, Gatorade, another Arizona iced tea, two Budweiser's, and a condom. Hey babe, I have a great date idea. Let's drink three bottles of Arizona iced tea, a Smirnoff, two Gatorades, and then we'll have sex. So you know the saying, there's a few ways to skin a cat, there's a few ways to wax a uh, canvas. Well, for the most part what happens is Fairfield Mills will actually make the fabric and then when they send it over to Martin, Martin will take the fabric and have wax between two hot rollers and they'll run the fabric through those rollers and what that's doing is effectively putting wax on the top side, the bottom side, but those rollers squeeze it so tight that they also put wax inside the fabric and that is the part that you can't really replicate by yourself. Eventually, after you wear your jacket for a season, maybe two, maybe three, depending on how often you wear it, you'll need to re-wax it because your jacket will slowly lose water resistant efficiency, water resistancy. So then you need to get some wax and reapply it, which is sometimes a huge pain in the butt. 99% of the time, it's a pain in the butt. But if you're looking for where to get wax and you want a discount, check out Otter Wax. I've worked with Otter Wax many times. They're my favorite wax and I actually reached out to them to get a link, they didn't reach out to me. So if you want a discount, get your wax there. The reason that you can't actually wash your jacket is because those rollers, when they're initially putting wax in the jacket, put it places that you can never go, crevices that you'll never see in your entire life. So when you're re-waxing the surface of your jacket, the wax will only go so far before it dries. So that's why you can never, 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 ever wash your jacket. And that's also why wax jackets get such a beautiful patina. Anyways, cannot wait to see you very, very soon. I will give you a mega update about the Iron Snail. There's a ton of stuff happening. Anyways, I'll see you soon. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're enjoying fall.